What is up guys? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am Diego and I'm a second year medical student here in London. Today I've got a good video for you. I've got a new one and it's all about the resources you need for medical school. Um, most of it will be tailored to first year medical school uh, but to be honest a lot of these resources I've been using throughout medical school so far and I think they're pretty good. So I'm going to be sharing them with you. I hope you also find them to be um, useful for you and as we get into this guys I hope you like it, comment, subscribe and yeah let's go. Alright guys, so in terms of resources, this is what I'm going to talk about. I want to talk about first sort of my core resources, the stuff I use and the stuff I've used for the two years I've been at medical school. Um, so, number one, lectures. So lecture notes are very important, okay? So even if you don't attend lectures physically, which is something I didn't do in second semester and haven't really done, um, it's important that you actually watch the lectures, okay? Because a lot of the content that's going to be in the lectures um, is going to obviously be tested because the people who do the lectures are more often than not going to be the people who write the questions, the exam questions. And so in hindsight, uh, I'd say for me, uh, it's definitely a learning point to make sure that as much as I'm using all of these other great resources that I'm going to tell you about, it's very important that you stick to the lectures, first of all any detail, any particular thing that's sort of very made very specific in the lecture notes, make sure you've gone over it because then just, you, you, you will know that you've covered the main things, okay? So number one, lecture note. Number two, so for me, what I one of the main resources that I use in first year uh, was this book. So let me show you. So it's this baby, the USMLE Step 1 book. It's, um, it's quite a big one, it's quite hefty. <laughs> And to be honest, in first year, I was actually carrying it around for some reason, um, which it wasn't, I mean, it's not ideal because it's super heavy. Um, but then actually towards the end, I realized, why don't I just download the PDF? Why don't I get the PDF version? Which obviously makes more sense and it's much more portable. But for some reason, I just it didn't click in my mind and it was maybe towards the end of the first year where I realized I should actually be doing that in PDF. But in terms of the book itself, so why is it useful? For me, I found it really useful because it highlights, it pretty much summarizes a lot of the core concepts that you'll go through in medical school and it adds a little bit more detail. So some extra details that are quite high yield and that actually, even if you're not planning on sitting in the USMLE or even if maybe some of the things that are covered there haven't come up yet in your curriculum, I found that it helped me a lot, like a lot for physiology, for immunology, um, and it also helped me quite a lot for rest as well. So for the rest blocks for first year, and even for this year, I found there was a lot of good information there, and I definitely recommend it. If anything, um, you know, it's just a few extra quid that you might have to spend, but I think it was really good. Um, and also because of the stuff that is covered in the US curriculum, I feel like there's, there's a bit more detail that they cover. They go into certain conditions a bit more. And so it was just helping me build up my knowledge so that when I come back to medical school, I could start making connections. What I will say though, with a step one book, it's a review book, which means it's not a book that's meant to uh, teach you uh, these concepts. It's meant, it's meant to sort of summarize a lot of the main concepts that you'll come across. So you definitely want to supplement it with YouTube videos, um, some channels that I'll be talking about, or your lecture notes or other books, all right? So you definitely want to do that. But all in all, I would rate the USMLD book a seven out of 10. For me, it was it was really good. And it was really um, sort of the key thing, The key, one of the key books actually I used for MSK as well. So the MSK dermatology stuff, I used it quite a lot and it was on point. So I definitely rec recommend, don't feel pressured into, get to, into getting it because I mean, all of this is based on my opinion, okay? It's just my opinion. There might be other things that you like or maybe just doesn't work for you, that's okay, all right? So yeah, step one book, I think it's good. Hopefully you too as well. So, second book. So for me, obviously pharmacology is quite important for a medical school. I think it kind of depends on the degree you're on. Um, if it's a graduate course or if it's an undergrad, 
I feel like us being an undergraduate course, there was a lot more emphasis on learning the mechanism of action of certain drugs and also just understanding what the effects of the drugs are. Um, and I think it might have been a bit different from the people who are on the five year course. Obviously, I mean, obviously they'll cover a lot of the same concepts, some to a greater extent, some to a lesser extent. But I do feel in terms of drugs, for firstly, we definitely went into it in more detail. And for me, the book that got me through it, that helped me learn it, um, was this book. So it's the top 100 drugs and apparently it's written by a professor at St. George's as well. Um, so yeah, but I found it to be really good. It summarizes a lot of the core aspects that you need to just understand the mechanism of action um, of a drug. And what I did is that everything that I'd sort of learned in this book, all of like the key aspects sort of like the indications, mechanism of action, what I would do is I'd literally insert it into Anki, straight away into Anki and just bam, 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 bam. And it helps, it actually helps because I found there was a decent amount of pharmacology questions that came up in um in the final year exam and i was just like bam i know it because i'd already covered it many times like throughout the year so I recommend the book it's sort of easy to read it explains everything really simply and yeah i'd say it's a, it's a really good book probably an eight out of ten for me i used it quite a lot and i've started to use it again in this second year of clinical med okay so my third resource um book resource mainly is this book so this is my baby okay this is pathoma this is my baby it might sound crazy but this book just look at the smile on my face this book is top tier for me i mean it depends obviously um if you're not planning on saying the usmle then that's fine but i think generally the amount of detail in this book for underlying pathology is top tier top tier and i remember we had some blocks on uh, breast pathology in first year and this went into so much detail i loved it because it it coincided a lot with what the professors were saying in lecture so i always felt okay i'm on the right track but then it would just go even above and beyond beyond and i really realized when i was like in pbl or when i was answering questions on practice papers it was it was like this had broken it down to me so well that when i actually then got, got into the exam questions or just in pbl a lot of it just seemed pretty simple because this had gone far more detailed than my lectures so i mean it, it literally covers everything it covers um literally every system everything gi endocrine breast cardiovascular blood cell disorders skin pathology msk the whole bunch it's here and yeah i mean i think you can download the pdf uh, for free from google I bought the uh, physical book and for this to be honest I would recommend the physical book because you can just make annotations into it and use it as a sort of reference book that you can come back um, and then if you actually want to like properly properly use the book it actually comes part of a course where um, you listen to all to videos and then you sort of make notes into the book annotations so yeah so I'd say it's really good for me that would be sort of my top tier for me 10 out of 10 Pathoma, 10 out of 10, I swear by it. And I think a lot of people will actually find a lot of topics that we cover in the UK curriculum much simpler if you give this some time. So my three books are these ones. Pathoma, 10 out of 10. Top 100 drugs, 8 out of 10, I think I said. But definitely 8 out of 10. And this was a solid 7 out of 10. But I wouldn't say essential, essential. I'd say it was good. I used it and... It, 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 it definitely is worth using, but I wouldn't say it's essential as a game changer. For me, these other two were definitely game changers, right? So those are resources in terms of books. So let's continue, okay? So some of the online resources that I use. So the main online resources I use, for example, for anatomy was Teach Me Anatomy. Um, Teach Me Physiology was really good, but Teach Me Anatomy for me was really good. I know there are some people who would use Ken Hub. I don't know what it was about it, but for some reason it just didn't it didn't do it for me. Teach me anatomy and anatomy lecture notes for me were the main things that I use for anatomy. Um I I'd say maybe in first year anatomy really wasn't a strong point, and to be honest, it's something that I definitely need to carry on building up on. But for me, Teach Me Anatomy was really good because it would um summarize like 
the area like sort of the area sort of you're looking at of anatomy but then it'll also highlight like the clinical relevance as well which will first year of, of graduate course medicine was really important because we weren't just learning structures for the sake of it but we had to relate it to a clinical problem so for me to teach me anatomy was really good and lecture notes were obviously really good so moving on to other online resources that i've used that i think are really good ninja nerd ninja nerd is literally a lifesaver it is definitely one of the channels you need to check out for physiology i'm not sure if they do other things other than physiology but i use them for physiology for my exams and it was like because my physiology was pretty bad. I, I sort of started medical school trying to learn a lot of facts you know, for, with Anki, which I, I do swear by. But I realised by second semester there was something missing because I couldn't make connections. When there were certain questions that were asking me things, I couldn't link it back because I didn't understand the whole system, what was going on. And in order to do that, you need to understand the physiology properly. And so how to do that for me was using was watching Ninja Nerd videos. When I mean I banged out these videos, I banged it out like I probably watch most of the videos on these channels that relate to the systems we are being tested on and having recommended it to some friends and having their feedback after, they also say the same, it was really good. So I'd recommend it to you. Even though the videos are very long, so some videos are like 40 minutes and I know it can feel like, is this even worth my time? Trust me it is. Just make sure to make good notes as you're going along because then you don't have to rewatch the video. But the information there is so well presented, the way he makes links are so good that once you do it, you won't forget and you just have that mindset of this is what's going on and you can sort of work questions out. And um, sort of a testament to it was that before, um, before, well, before my, my exams, physiology was one of my weakest areas. But in my final year breakdown for my grades, it was the highest scoring area for me was physiology. And I really attribute it to a ninja nerd. Okay, so another online resource that I used, which was really good, was Pulse Notes. So Pulse Notes is a really good uh, website that you can basically use to sort of get a overview of some of the main conditions you might see. Um, it really depends on what you, you want to look at. But for example, if you're looking at... Um, AKI is um, they've got a nice sort of website article that you can look at. Covers everything from an overview, clinical features, signs, symptoms, investigations, management, epidemiology, the whole bunch. And it breaks it down really nice. So if you're someone who's more of a reader and that's the way you understand and that's sort of the way you would like to go, I'd say Post Notes is really good. Another one is Calgary Guide. Calgary Guide is very good because it sort of summarizes pathophysiology certain conditions um, in a flow diagram type of sort of um, setup which is really good for some people I think it's good as well but wasn't my main go-to um, in terms of learning physiology or learning stuff so moving on AMBOSS so AMBOSS Anki add-on for me is one of the top tier uh, tools you need to use um, they've got a free trial and then after that I think you have to pay like um, ten dollars i think it is a month or something like that but for me it, it is amazing like it really is really good and the way it syncs up with anki and the way you can just literally click on the keyword and just go straight into it and learn more about it is amazing for me it's a, it really is i did the free trial just to see what it was like but now i'm hooked like i actually i'm actually hurt that my trial finished and i'm gonna have to buy it but i've been trying to push it to one side and not not buy it but I've gotten so used to it and I've found so much value in it that now I'm actually, yeah, I'm definitely going to end up buying it. And that leads me on to the big one. So the big one for me was Anki. Anki as a resource, it's online. It can also be used offline. Anki is a bit of a controversial one, I've realised. I feel like online, there's definitely sort of, there seems to be a lot more support for Anki, um, or advocates of Anki. I don't know if it's the algorithm or whatever, but... Um, in, I don't know, in my cohort at least, it doesn't seem like Anki is that popular. But for me, Anki is, 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 is like the gold standard. It's something you definitely need to use for medical school. Um, and yeah, I used it. You can sort of start with a basic deck and you can start, you know, sort of taking a basic approach to Anki. And then with more experience, you can start making it a bit more advanced. It's still going to be equally as effective with advanced. There might be a few things you can add to it. 
um, but overrank I think is really good for me it was the staple of my sort of day-to-day -day from first year and continues to be in second year so I definitely recommend Anki to finalize some of the other resources I used it was QuizMed, PassMed very good question banks I think they're they're pretty good I think they are good I'd definitely say make sure to use them but always have in the back of your mind that your university the way they write questions might be a bit different for me in my experience they were definitely quite different to PassMed and QuizMed in terms of the way they're structured and even the concepts they're testing so I'd say use them um, but always have that in mind another sort of notable mention for me is osmosis I used osmosis for a few weeks um, it was quite expensive in hindsight would I get it again personally I wouldn't um, and I'm not planning on renewing my subscription for osmosis um, but it is good and I know there's a lot of people who swear by it and they actually find it to be a very useful uh, learning tool for me it just didn't it didn't click for me and I just found a lot of the stuff on there I could really use uh, I could really use a YouTube for so like Ninja Nerd and other channels so yeah that concludes this video today I hope you found this useful if you did drop a like comment subscribe and let me know what other videos you want to see I'd say for med school definitely you know just find what works for you and stick to it be repetitive with it put the time in the hours and you'll definitely see rewards for it so don't be discouraged i hope you liked this video and if you did i'll see you here next time all right bye bye